Hey there, good evening. It's good to have you here with us. I'm Tim Pham. Let's get right to breaking news. The Spokane Regional Health District is reporting 647 new coronavirus cases since Wednesday. Here's a breakdown of what we know. 238 cases were reported yesterday and 409 reported today. Three new deaths have been reported since Wednesday, bringing the total number of deaths to 254. 105 people are in the hospital. 85 of them are Spokane County residents. Meanwhile, the Panhandle Health District is reporting 275 new cases since Wednesday. One new death was reported, bringing the total number of deaths to 107. There are currently 73 people in the hospital. All right, to weather now. Today we saw the return of mild temperatures. Michelle Boss is joining us now from home. Michelle, is this weather usual for the end of November? It was a little bit warmer than average, but it's kind of a normal swing of the pendulum with warmer than average, colder than average temperatures. We did make it into the lower 40s today. Uh, we were lucky and got to see a little bit of sunshine here in Spokane, especially area south. You can see uh, high clouds mainly across the inland northwest, and the sun was able to peek through that. It's kind of hard to see, but there were some parts of the inland northwest that did not see the sunshine today. Take a look at the visibility. 10-mile visibility across much of eastern Washington and north Idaho, but as you get into the Columbia Basin, Moses Lake was socked in into fog all day. Places like Othello, Wenatchee had reduced visibilities and some dense clouds out there and that really helped their temperatures down. You can't see as much of the difference now as temperatures have fallen here in Spokane into the upper 30s, but we were in the low 40s today along with much of uh, the Coeur d'Alene area, much of far eastern Washington. Moses Lake, Othello, Wenatchee did not get out of the middle 30s because they were stuck in the clouds. We'll see thicker clouds overnight as temperatures fall to right around freezing, maybe a degree or two below. We may have a brief sprinkle early tomorrow morning, but look for the sun to come out tomorrow afternoon and a continuation of above average highs in the lower 40s. Sunday looks great as well, mostly sunny 43. We have a chance of rain and snow again for the start of next week. Monday, the high 40. And so I would encourage you if you're planning on coming to get a tree, come soon. It's a Spokane holiday tradition that benefits those in need. Now you can help make a difference. Of course, this year the need is even greater because of the pandemic. Creme 2's Morgan Trout tells us how buying a tree for your home can also help bring some holiday cheer to another home in our community. Finding your perfect Christmas tree is a serious task. Whether you want tall, short, spruce, fir, well, the kids at Hutton Settlement will guide you. It's opening day for the annual Christmas tree farm fundraiser at this historic orphanage. Every dollar that the sale makes raises money for the children's educational programs. Being here and getting to know a lot of the staff and like the kids and having them being here supporting me of what everything I go through and stuff. Danielle is a 17-year-old who has lived at the Hutton Settlement for five years. Working the farm is one of her favorite aspects of living at the home because she knows how important the fundraiser is for her future. Um, my favorite part is just kind of being out here, helping people out who want to buy trees and how I could just help the tree farm this year be better. Director of Community Engagement Jesse Lowry says the pandemic has greatly impacted their funding. Our services have needed to ramp up because just like many households across uh, the world, we've had kids, you know, all day every day for school. And so that means just um, increased services and increased costs. So over 800 trees are now needing a home, plus garlands, wreaths and gift baskets prepared by the kids. Lowry says by supporting their tree farm, the kids will be able to continue their gardening program, woodworking activities, and other outdoor education. It's really nice because you have people who care for you and they're willing to be there. And you get to like know other girls who kind of went through different experiences and all that. So it's just really great. The farm will go until December 19th or until all the trees have been sold. And if the sale goes as well as it did today, they say it may only take a couple of weeks. Reporting in Spokane Valley, Morgan Trow, Creme 2 News.
Morgan, thank you. Love to see what they're doing there. Well, the day after Thanksgiving, holiday decorations and lights are going up. Christmas trees are being bought and lots of people are shopping for some of the best sales of the year. Now there's a push to shop local this year to support small businesses going through another round of COVID-19 restrictions. In downtown Spokane today, Nordstrom unveiled their new Christmas decorations. WizKids Toys at River Park Square is ready for the holiday shopping season as well. The local business special in learning tools for kids. The fact that then they're supporting a small business and local, you know, hand in hand. That's just, that's just, I can't say words for it. It's just amazing. Well, if you want to visit and get your picture with Santa this year, you have until Christmas Eve. The mall has safety precautions in place to help accommodate social distancing. You can make a reservation at riverparksquare.com. Five, four, three, two, one. Woo! Well, the holiday time cheer is here. In the last hour or so, Spokane's downtown Christmas tree lit up the night. This year, the tree lighting ceremony was virtual. It's the kickoff for the Riverfront Park Holiday Tree Walk. The event will run through the new year. There will also be an expanded trail of lights. Holiday display at Riverfront Park starts on uh, December 1st and goes through the new year. And a drive through holiday light show will take place at Manitou Park. Love all the festivities. And today, Wheatland Bank horse and carriage rides start. Rides will run through Christmas Eve. You can enjoy the sights of downtown from a horse drawn carriage while singing some of your favorite carols. The ride starts at Visit Spokane Visitor Center located next to the Rotary Fountain across from Wheatland Bank. To prevent the spread of COVID-19, added precautions include pre-registering before your ride, hand sanitizer has been installed on the carriage, and only six people are allowed on the carriage at a time, and plexiglass a divider has been installed between the driver and the carriage. Well, this year Santa Express is going virtual through the store. Kids can submit a wish list with gift ideas for their loved ones. Kids ages four through 12 are able to participate. Once their wish list is submitted online, a special Santa Express elf will prepare the surprise gifts for pickup before Christmas. The virtual gift store is open until December 20th. All proceeds and donations will benefit the Vanessa Behan. And uh, to start shopping and to set up a pickup time, go to SantaExpress.org. Well, today was the first Friday of skiing at Schweitzer Mountain Resort. Face coverings must be worn at all times, a new policy. Tomorrow, Lakeview Triple will be open. Uh, since it's early in the season, it is recommended to stick to the groomed terrain. And if you would like to ski next week, you can buy your lift tickets online. Tomorrow is opening day for Silver Mountain and 49 degrees north. At Silver Mountain, lifts will open up starting at 815 in the morning. At 49 degrees north, the ticket office opens up at 830 in the morning and lifts start spinning at 9. Both ski resorts have coronavirus restrictions in place, so make sure to check out their website in advance. But they say plan on being outside most of your day. Well, as coronavirus cases are on the rise, there is a race to get a vaccine approved. Coming up after the break, where three pharmaceutical companies stand in the process.